Every time I've come close to dying, it's involved a mountain, a steep slope, and a somewhat reckless human. Uh, me. My name is Josh Cripps, and I've had the unbelievable fortune to travel the world as a landscape photographer for most of the past decade. And in my years of adventuring around the planet, I've slid down icy chutes in New Zealand, tumbled off sandstone ramps in Utah, and been caught in rock slides in Chile. But nowhere have I had more close calls with gravity than on the granite mountainsides of my home range, the Sierra Nevada. So perhaps it shouldn't surprise you when I start this story here, perched at the top of what I would later come to call Satan's ass crack. Look at that, you got a giant shock stone there, giant drop there. Can't tell how wide it is. It just looks like death and destruction the whole way down. I had just scrambled up a thousand feet of talus to find a way over an unnamed pass in Kings Canyon National Park, only to be confronted by this death trap. There's no way I'm going down that with a bag on. So there I was wondering how the hell I was gonna get down that chute without killing myself in the process. But in order for you to understand exactly how I ended up in that particular spot, I need to back up a little bit to the summer of 2017. Well, hey there, y'all muskrats. I'm off for another adventure in a place I call paradise, the Kearsarge Lakes. Kearsarge is well known in the world of Sierra hikerdom, not just because of its spectacular scenic beauty, but also because it's just about the easiest way to get over the Sierra Crest to access the true wilderness of the Sierra backcountry. And on that particular trip, as I stood atop the nearly 12,000 foot high Kearsarge Pass gazing into Kings Canyon, I resolved to do something I rarely do while backpacking, climb a mountain, or rather a small mountain, or rather this small mountain, the cutest and most petitest of the Kearsarge pinnacles. After setting up camp near the largest of the Kearsarge lakes, I followed a meandering creek uphill to the base of the pinnacle. I think I might have a mosey up that gully right there. See what's on the other side. And after some fun fourth class scrambling, there I was one single move below the summit. I didn't make it to the very top, which is literally just three feet above me because it's kind of an awkward move right here over this overhanging block with some ridiculous exposure. It's probably not a hard move, but if you went down, man, you'd go down. Alex Honnold, I am not. But as a wonderful consolation prize, I found a granite ledge some 50 feet below, which offered a sensational view west into the backcountry of Kings Canyon. I'm a dude who loves maps. And as I stood on that ledge learning the names of the mighty Sierra peaks in front of me, one particular place on the map drew my attention, the Gardiner Basin. It was awfully remote, almost exclusively above treeline and surrounded by peaks with no trail leading to it and no obviously easy way to get there. Now that looked interesting. And in that moment, I resolved to visit the Gardiner Basin as soon as I could. But first, I still had to climb down from that pinnacle and try not to get too cold overnight. Now I'm just a little bit chagrined to admit that I forgot to bring pants on this here trip. After that overnight trip, time whooshed by in a flurry of adventures. And before I knew it, summer 2018 had arrived and my backpacking legs were getting itchy. In late July, a long spell of thunderstorm activity was forecasted to hit the Sierra, and since that's my favorite kind of weather to backpack in, now if you listen closely, you just might hear the peal of thunderclaps off in the distance. That's cause for rejoicing, because incredible conditions for photography. That meant it was finally time to see what the Gardner Basin was all about. Would it live up to my hopes and dreams of a glorious backcountry Shangri-La? Would there be any good compositions or light for photography? Would I meet the woman of my dreams on her own solo backpacking adventure? Or would it all be one big turd fest? There was only one way to know for sure, and that was to strap a 25-pound pack to my back, load it up with another 10 pounds of camera gear, and beat feet into the mountains. 
Having had the winter and spring to pour over my beloved topo maps, I knew the exact route I was going to take into Gardner Basin. Starting from the Onion Valley Trailhead, I'd hike up to the Golden Trout Lakes and from there head west, cross country over Dragon Pass and down to Dragon Lake. From there, I'd find my way into the Ray Lakes Basin, then hike over 60 Lakes Pass before turning south to navigate yet another off-trail pass to finally reach Gardner Basin. That route would be about 13 and a half miles with 6,000 feet of elevation gain over multiple cross-country passes. It almost seemed too easy. It is one hot, dry, dusty slog. The route climbed steeply up a sandy trail to the beautiful Golden Trout Lakes where I was treated to a particularly stunning sight. Carpets of shooting star. And here I'd like to take a little bit of a detour for a moment because by now you are surely wondering why I'm speaking with that drawl every time you see me in the field. Well, hey there, muskrats. There is nothing. Quite like the clarity of mind that descends upon you when you take that first step on a high Sierra trail. Well, it's a bit of a long story, so for now, suffice it to say, whenever that particular hat goes on my head, the accent comes out of my mouth. Anyway, I took out about three and a half miles to walk, maybe another 1,300 feet up to Dragon Pass. And it's clouding up precipitously, which makes me a little bit worried that uh, the cumulus clouds I spied earlier over the crest may be fixing to drop some rain, so I better get a move on. I continued hiking uphill until I reached the highest of the Golden Trout Lakes, where I could finally see my objective. That little notch, that little doggy, is the pass that I'm trying to get over. Little did I realize that was not Dragon Pass at all, but rather the aforementioned Satan's ass crack. My guess is gonna be one hour of travel to get about, I don't know, it's like a half mile linear distance and 800 feet up. Oh boy, here we go. I happily meandered up the rock and scree until I stood on that three foot wide precipice at the top of the chute. Well, friends, I gotta say, that was an awful lot of goddamn hard work. Whew, what a slog, but sun's coming back out. Made it to the pass and made it to King's Canyon. So looking down this incredibly steep gully, Looking down there, Dragon Lake, that's that first lake. That's where I play the camp tonight. And beyond that is Ray Lakes Basin. So I need to scout a little bit, make sure these two precipitous drop-offs I can see directly down this gully are not actually death falls. And uh, we'll go from there. I took off my pack and gingerly eased myself into the chute to scout a path down. In this case, it was immediately obvious that this chute was not a viable way down the mountain, but rather a death trap waiting to happen. I felt the scree sliding under my shoes and knew that if I didn't get out of there soon, I never would. Scrabbling at the rotten walls and peeling away layer after layer of rock, I frantically pulled myself out of the chute and sat panting at the top. My heart pounding in my chest. It all day long. There's no way I'm going down that with a bag on. Well, at this point, I, I meant to feeling a little bit bamboozled. I suppose it's possible that I misread the topo map and that the actual pass is around that corner, but I do not believe so. Now, I have to go back down in any case because there's sure ain't shit no way I'm going down that gully. Proposition uh, descent I am not excited about. Nevertheless, I'm without option at the moment. Since Dragon Pass was not marked on my topo map, I had assumed it would be the lowest point on the ridge, but since that clearly wasn't the case, I now had to rely on my own route finding skills to uncover a safe way up and over the ridge. Came down, skirted that little rib, and there's definitely no, no pass over here that I thought, but it looks like there may be a way up through some of these rocks. One thing I've discovered in my Sierra ramblings is that when you see a bunch of jumbled boulders, there's almost always a way you can wriggle through them. I picked a line in the rocks above me and began to climb. Just to give you a little bit of a, an idea of the type of terrain we're dealing with here going across country. Ooh. It's just rocks, rocks and rocks. Up and up and up we go. And it was going great for a while, until it wasn't. 
I had been scrambling up third and fourth class terrain, challenging but not impossible with a heavy pack on, but then I reached an impasse. A low fifth class move up a whale-shaped slab. And remember, Alex Honnold, I am not. So I could either down climb and look for yet another route over the ridge, or I could hang myself out to dry on this slab. But since down climbing fourth class terrain with a heavy pack is heinous and sketchy, I decided to go up. And with a graceful climbing technique you could only describe as rock humping, I spread eagled myself on that slab and inched upward until I found solid handholds and a series of easy boulders that, to my great delight, led to the summit ridge. Well, holy shit snacks, compadres. I just want to say F that with a right whale penis because my heart was pounding, 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 pounding going up that. Anyway, it's pretty friggin' amazing up here, I gotta say, now that I'm here. The views are just spectacular in every single direction. And when I got to the top here, I let out a whoop of triumph. And you know what came squirreling around the corner? A couple of Big horn sheep. First time I've seen them here in the Sierra. Pretty cool to be that close. Man, the fidelity with which they just ran down this spine over here and then down a gully was incredible. Now, thankfully, I do believe it's gonna be possible to get down this northwest side of the gully. Thank goodness, because just going back down to the lake, boy, that would be a hell of a moral defeat. And with great joy, I followed those sheepies to a sandy gully where I partook in one of my favorite Sierra activities, a 1,500-foot boot ski down the scree to the bottom of the gully. Now, that doesn't seem dangerous at all, does it? Praise Jeebus! I made it to Dragon Lake. Oh, what a fine lake it is. From the lake, not only was there a sensational view of Mount Cotter and Clarence King, but also a perfect look back into the sphincter-clenching chute I initially thought was Dragon Pass. I allowed myself a retroactive shiver, then went off to photograph the sunset over the sublime Ray Lakes Basin. Now, I've heard it said many a time that the Ray Lakes Basin here in Kings Canyon is one of the most beautiful places in the Sierra. And I tell you what, in this moment, I would be hard pressed to disagree with that. All in all, a rewarding day, chock full of stunning scenery, hard work, and only a few heart-pounding moments thrown in for good measure. After a near sleepless night, caused perhaps by too much lingering adrenaline in my system, I woke the next day to piercingly blue skies and surprisingly warm temperatures. Now it was hot last night, downright hot. As I packed up camp, the heat continued to build and given that it was barely 9 a.m. when the first puffy, moisture-laden clouds of the day appeared, hopefully we're gonna be seeing lots of these guys today. Cumulus clouds, thunderstorms. And so I made quick work of that morning's hiking. First I gotta drop down into Ray Lakes, check that out. By gum we did it. Cruise a little 35 minutes stroll. All the time, the thunderclouds continued to stack up. An hour later, by the time I had hiked up and over 60 lakes past, the skies were dark and brooding. And while the hiking so far had not been particularly difficult, little did I realize I'd soon face a challenge of a different nature. My initial trip plan called for me to stay that night in Sixty Lakes Basin, but the weather intervened in a big way. A little change of plans. I really came out here to photograph the Gardner Basin and thunderstorms. And it's just up over there, about a mile and a half maybe, thousand vertical feet. And since there's no guarantee of thunderstorms tomorrow, that means today is the only option. So. Kind of going against my better judgment here to walk towards a storm, but uh, that's what you do for photography. And if that isn't a metaphor for life, I don't know what is. Sometimes you gotta walk toward the storm.
Upon reaching the saddle, I was shocked to see what lay on the other side. Starbucks. No, just kidding. There's absolutely nothing. This is stark as can be. That's right, it was a moonscape of considerable inhospitality. My gut dropped. Where was my backcountry Shangri-La? Where were all the epic compositions I was going to shoot? Where was my solo adventure, babe? I didn't see them anywhere. This sucks, I shouted at the sky. I was tempted to retreat back down to the lush, flower-filled meadows of Sixty Lakes Basin, but in good conscience, I couldn't give up that easily. Well, amigos, even though the descent down in the Gardner Basin looks like garbage, and travel across the basin looks like giant diarrhea, and it's stark as hell, I don't see any flat spots to put a tent down. Well, this is what I came here to check out, to photograph, so I'd be disappointed in myself if I didn't at least go down, take a closer look at it. So here we go. Hopefully all this rain and lightning and thunder has been going on up here keeps at bay and I don't get totally drenched. I don't know what I'm doing. More pain and suffering in the name of the great Sierra photo. So as Mammatus clouds formed above me, I shouldered my pack and began the slog through the Gardner Basin, clambering over boulders the size of refrigerators, looking for something, anything that would justify the effort of getting here. 90 minutes and barely a mile later, I began approaching the western shelf of the upper basin. And as I did, my day took on the most glorious U-turn I have ever experienced. Well, it just goes to show you, just shows to go ya, that if you trust in the system, the High Sierra always delivers. What is the system? I have no idea, but this view is incredible. An endless series of terraces, lakes, waterfalls, trees, and meadows, all backed by the mighty Gardner Peak, which from the saddle I had thought to simply be a small triangle of rock, but I couldn't have been more wrong. From this spot, I could see how magnificent the peak truly was, an ascendant spear of granite leaping thousands of feet above the surrounding terrain, shimmering as snowmelt cascaded down its granite flanks. But it wasn't just the landscape that had changed. Back over the saddle, where I had been questioning my decision-making skills, rain fell as thick and dark as an oil spill. But to the west, the skies were clearing, and the sun began to break free of the clouds. Now, do y'all know what happens when you got sun in one direction and rain in the other direction? That's right, you get rainbows. And on this day, it wasn't just any rainbow that formed, but one of the most intense and unusual rainbows of my life. Now, can somebody please explain what the hell is happening with this rainbow? I see the patterns and the colors repeating three times. Do y'all see that as well? What the hell is going on? And when the arc of a double rainbow appeared, to say it was euphoric would be an understatement. Rainbows are ephemeral things, usually gone in a fleeting moment, so I never thought I'd be in a position where I'd get bored of shooting one. But the rainbow that night lasted the better part of an hour. My mind aglow, I took a short break to set up camp, but I reckon I found just about the greatest campsite. Then I set off to explore a nearby granite bench where the Sierra continued to provide great, glorious gifts. Now we've about an hour and a half maybe before sunset, so I'm over here lower down the basin scouting a few places to shoot. That's Mount Cotter up there. You know what I like about the name Mount Cotter? If you put a period after the sea, it becomes Mount Sea Otter, which I reckon is a much better name. 
And despite the unsettled weather of the day, the lake was as smooth as glass, reflecting the mountain above. I jumped in for a quick swim, then ventured off toward the west. And what I found there, well, is this real life? What is this place? This may be truly one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. Uh, I just can't, can't quite believe it. As I watched that spectacular sunset unfold over that spectacular basin, I couldn't help but reflect on the fact that pushing through discomfort so often leads to an even greater reward. Now that was a truly remarkable day, the kind that comes along only ever so often. Well, cock a doodle do, melon farmers. Today what I'm gonna do, is just romp down to that little lake over there, squirrel back up over the pond over there, and then cruise back out over to Sixty Lakes Basin. All in all, I spent most of two days in the Gardner Basin before hiking on to other destinations in Kings Canyon. In order to avoid the drama of Dragon Pass a second time, I took a longer route home, traveling for the most part on good trail. The hike out from Gardner was remarkably beautiful and rewarding, and I enjoyed many magnificent moments, but that's a story for another time. So until then, this is Josh Cripps signing off, wishing you great light and happy adventuring. When you feel there's nothing more ahead The hills they seem all green, but they hide all the monsters And you kept holding my hand as you reach for